Okay, let's start this video by saying this. You might need a camera to record and actually produce a photograph, but you don't necessarily need a camera to learn photography. So I guess it's case to say, grab a drink, make yourself comfortable, and let's go straight to another video. And you might ask yourself, why would I want to learn photography without a camera? Well, first and foremost, not everyone who learns or wants to learn about photography is necessarily or wants to be a photographer. Of course, generally speaking, they might be. But speaking from a personal example, I'm interested in many things that I read regularly about, such as painting, theatre plays, but I'm not a painter or performer or I aim to do any of those things. However, even for us photographers, learning without a camera brings its own advantages because we don't need just a camera to be photographers. We need to train our eyes, we need inspiration, we need knowledge, and perhaps even more important than that, we need our sensitivity to be able to relate and perceive the world that surrounds us, or so I think. Okay, so if we go back in time and we look at someone like Dorothea Lange, we'll realize that her photography, um, you know, she had to, of course, learn how to master a camera, how to master her tools, to develop pictures and etc. But she also had to stay in touch with another, let's say, capability or another tool, if you will, which is her sensitivity or something that I also like to call her emotional intelligence. And I say this because, for me, her emotional intelligence was super important in order to understand the emotions in the subject, but also the emotion of the viewer who would interpret a scene that she captured. In my opinion, she had to effectively photograph situations that showcased the emotion of the subject with dignity, and at the same time have these photographs communicate a clear or high level of emotion to its viewer so that programs could be created and support raised for certain causes and communities. And emotional intelligence is one of the best qualities a photographer can have. And I'm not necessarily saying that photographers per norm have to have a strong emotional intelligence in the way that they deal with others, but in the way that they perceive others. And we can profound ours and stay in touch with it by introducing moments in our life which allow us to ponder on our emotion. Moments of interpretation and reflection, to be precise. For instance, when we look back at a photo and ask ourselves, what is it communicating to us? Or even printing our photos. But before I digress, further, I wanted to bring us to the center of the question of can we learn photography without a camera and how can we do so? And I wanted to talk to you about the example of someone that I read about and this person was, you know, uh, they had a moto and they had a very interesting, um, you know, exercise they used to teach their students. And this person who's highly influential, he, you know, had connections to the Museum of Modern Art. He, you know, was the editor for very big magazines. He was the mentor for people like Dianne Harvis and um, Richard Avedon. We're talking about Alexei Brodovich. And Alexei Brodovich was someone that besides his editorial work, he was a photographer and he also gave classes and he had a motto they used to tell or they used to teach his students and he used to say in a time where the process of pressing a camera button could have great financial and time-based consequences especially here i would say in the press and fashion industries photographers need to learn to make photographs before even picking up a camera and one of the exercises he used to give his students in order to learn to frame and compose an image was to curiously enough cut a rectangle into a sheet of card, remove the shape and leave only the card frame. And Brodovich incentivizes his students to use this frame to frame the world as they saw fit and to use no other lens except for the lens they were born with. Of course, we're talking about the eye. To me, this speaks volumes, and I get that this can be quite dated, especially because in Brodovich's time, they didn't have, you know, smartphones. We have so many cameras today. They're very, very cheaply available today. Of course, we can discuss the quality um, in there, but still, we have access to more cameras than, you know, our peers back in the day, and more technology, of course. But for me personally, this reminds me of an exercise that I do 
and I call this exercise um, taking photographs without a camera. And I'll explain why this makes sense to me and why I did this. I did this particularly when I was learning photography or I was trying to teach myself, trying to get better, but I still do this today. Um, sometimes I forget my camera and I just go on a walk and I try to look for pictures. And I'm not saying doing like this sort of framing, but just trying to look for pictures. Um, what could be a good picture and why? And in my head, I do this process as I walk and it might come like, you know, I'm not necessarily just like taking a walk over this, but just letting it naturally come to me. That would be a good picture. That would be a good picture and why in my head. Okay. The, the way someone's lying, the way, you know, uh, color blocking, the way, you know, two colors meet, the contrast, the lines, perspective, etc., whatever it might be. And the reason why this exercise speaks to me and also Brodovich is because, as he puts it, without the understanding of how to construct an image from its constituent parts, and here we can say line, color, perspective, contrast, all those things that constitute a composition, there is no basis to the making of a photograph. And I agree because at the end of the day, to make a photograph is a process. And whether we're working on a project, shooting a birthday party in our backyard, someone's wedding or a brand deal, we all go through a different process. And I would even argue that you cannot repeat said process, even if the interval of time between one shot and the next is one or two seconds. Your mind will inevitably be thinking of different things, paying attention to something more in particular, and the speed of thoughts can for sure change our process or perception in the blink of an eye. And this is kind of following that theory of time that says that basically, you know, no moment can be repeated um, or each moment is unique in their own way. Um, and I believe that. Um, but anyways, this is not everything that we can learn or how we can learn photography without a camera. We can learn photography without a camera by focusing on another thing that we all do inevitably as humans, whether you're a photographer or not, a painter, a writer, etc. We all do this and we all observe. And I believe observation is inherently connected with something else and that is attention. Because to observe is to look with more intent or monitoring a certain activity, which infers, therefore, that you're paying attention to something. And so one of the best exercises to learn photography, and I do this all the time, especially when I make videos about them, is to grab a book, a photography book in this case, and really focus and pay attention to the images as they flow before my eyes. And if you have the chance, write down notes, not necessarily as reflection, but more as a reaction to what you're seeing. Personally, I believe this type of exercise or going out for a walk and finding out pictures will definitely with time lead to an improvement of our perception of the potential that we see. And not only will learn to recognize it, but also to visualize the potential on a certain scene. And when we're eventually looking through the camera, we'll resolve and organize all the elements we see. And this can be done in a split of a second. It's what we call the creating a composition and then make therefore the conscious or unconscious choice of what we want in the frame. And then of course we make a record of that by pressing the shutter button. Now, another way of adding truth to this statement that we can indeed learn photography without a camera is to focus on reflection. And reflection here, I would say on our experiences as photographers, reflection on our workflow, reflection on our results. I think reflection is without a doubt imperative in any creative art and photography is no different in my opinion. Personally, I think we can even draw a comparison between photography with painting, like the painter's moment of creation when he or she brushes the paint against the canvas, making calculations as they go along, is similar to the moment photographers are out with their cameras, looking for subjects or in a studio photographing someone. It's the moment where all creatives are totally encapsulated by what they're doing. And much like a painter would analyze the state of his painting, how much is left to complete, pay attention to every stroke, rethink color palettes and what's working and what's not, so do we photographers need that moment of reflection in the aftermath of the photo. Looking at our photos, printing our photos, writing about the path we're taking in case we're working on a project, or simply checking in with ourselves about what we've learned with someone 
or something, aspects to get better at, etc. And all of this that I've been telling you in this video, observation, reflection, I've honestly been doing this for many years and has now resulted in this. This is a, my first um, travel diary, so I, well, I like to call it. And basically this is um, a little book that I put together on my journey uh, as a photographer, but not just that. Um, basically, I pick up trips that I've been and I mix the images that I've taken as a photographer with my reflection of the things that I experienced, my learned, my growth, um, my whole process. And so this book will be available soon for pre-order and I'll give you some more details right after I talk to you about how I actually put this book together and that would have not been possible without my partners at Sal. Sal is a professional photo lab that prints high quality photography products from prints of all sizes, postcards, business cards, albums, books, etc. And they were extremely helpful in the process of putting Changing in Light together, first because they provided me with guidance through their samples of papal and cover materials, and I immediately picked the titanium and the black leather as potential cover materials. Then, after putting my book together, I used a very simple software, since there was a lot of writing in it, I used Pages, and after exporting from Pages to PDF, I was able to align everything as I wanted pick fonts and sizes to Sal's designer software. And while I did this through the website, you can also do this through their software, no matter where you're based, because Sal is available in Europe, in the UK and the US. And the whole process was quite smooth. After lining up the book and reading and rereading, I submitted it and received it at home a few days later, alongside some postcards I also ordered. But anyways, this has been the end of a journey for me. Um, I've been putting this together for quite some time. If you're a member of the channel, you know exactly that because I've shared this with the members a long time before um, I even, you know, showed this in video or I talked about this. And um, I wanted to really thank Sal for all their you know, support in this with sizing, with everything. There's a lot of guidance in their website as well. So link to their website will be down below. And if you go through my link, which is down below, you get 50% off or you can sign up for 50% off um, discount code. And I think this is, you know, super helpful if you're looking to work on something yourself, some prints, some postcards, even for something that is not photography related. Uh, you can want to put, you know, a personal album uh, for someone or business cards or, you know, etc. So link to Sally's down below and I'd like to thank them for kindly sponsoring this video and for allowing me to be creative and put stuff like this together. However, last but not the least, never forget how important the role of inspiration is in photography. And so try to also include other activities in your life that leave you inspired to create and pick up your camera to do more. I personally love watching movies and when we talk about photography, watching photography documentaries leaves me always with a bug to go out and do something myself. So with that being said, I'll be leaving information about changing light down below um, and I will be talking in more detail, perhaps on my website if you're interested. But anyways, I would like to thank Sal for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching. And I'd like to let you know that I'll be here for another video. So it'd be cool if you can join me in, you know, in the channel for another video very, very soon. So I would like to say take care, stay safe, keep shooting, keep creating, keep pursuing your photography, your own path in photography. And yeah, I'm out. Peace. Down the line.